Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Mrinmoy Pramanik. I teach Competitive Indian Language and Literature at the University of Calcutta. Now we will discuss a paper uh, Competitive Literature Drama in India and it is on Ratan Thiam and his production of his play Chakra Buha and Kanhayalal's Pebet. The content of this module is written by Saidul Hawk, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Tehatta Government College, Kalyan University, West Bengal. A modern Indian drama in the 1970s entered an unprecedented radical phase with the advent of an alternative idiom. During this period, preceding immediate 70s and the post 70s experimentation in dramatic theme and dramatic technique took a new shape in the hands of stalwarts like Badal Sarkar, Habib Tanbir, Ken Panikar, Sauli Mitra, Ratan Thiam, Kanhayalal Hesnam, etc. Dramatists like Badal Sarkar challenged the idea of proscenium theatre and proposed an alternative third theatre that would be portable, flexible, inexpensive and more nearer to the masses. Havik Tanbir and Shaoli Mitro started thematic experimentation in their plays by incorporating regional flavours like Chhattisgarhi folk elements and the Kathakata of Bengal respectively. Relevance of Ratan Thiam and uh, Hesinam Kanhayalal in this phase of alternative dramatic revolution is exceedingly significant, not only because of their conscious choice of alternative and radical theatre, but also because of their cultural location in Manipur, a state in northeastern India. Manipur can boast of a rich performance tradition. Anjum Katyal puts it nicely, I quote, Manipur is intensely theatre active. The performance arts traditions of this state are rich and varied. The Shankirtana and Lai Harauba, for example, though religious ceremonials contain dramatic and performative elements, several spheres of theatre, each a complete system in itself. Overlap a coexist the older traditional performance forms, particularly the Sumang Lila or courtier theatre the established proscenium theatre and the modern experimental alternative theatre. Theatre practitioners like Thiam and Kanhalal had then a rich cultural heritage of their own apart from the traditional Indian plays which follow classical Sanskrit treaties like Natya Shastra. Now let us talk about Ratan Thiam. Ratan Thiam, born in 1948, is a prominent Indian playwright and theatre director who won the prestigious Sangeet Natak Academy Award and acted as the chairperson of National School of Drama. He is also the founder director of Chorus Repertory Theatre. He is considered as one of the leading figures of the theatre of roots movement in Indian theatre, which started in the 1970s. Among his notable plays include Imphal Imphal 1982, uh, Lengs Sonaying 1986, an adaptation of uh, Anulia's Antigone, Uttar Priyadarshi, Chingalon Mapan Tampank Ama or Nine Hills One Valley, Ritu Samharam or Ritu Samharam by Sanskrit playwright Kalidasha, etc. Ratanthiam also completed a Mahavarata trilogy with Vasha's Uruvangam in 1981 following it up in 1984 with his own Chakra Buha and culminating with Vasha's uh, Karnavaram in 1989. The plays are linked thematically through the central presence of an individual facing an onslaught of violence, a kind of cosmic global flow of violence that compels him to question his identity. Ratanthiam engages with Mahavarata story from a different perspective. He chose for his heroes characters who are traditionally ignored and marginalized in Brahminic exegesis. According to Samik Bandupadhai, as he identified with Vasha's characters non-heroes turned into heroes, Ratan was taking a position in relation to the mainstream institutionalization of the mythical heroes. Duryadhana, Karna and Avimanyu 
takes center stage in Thiam's production of Mahabharata trilogy. Chakra Buha, which was uh, published in 1984, is a seminal play which has been performed widely and won critical acclaim, including the Fringe First Award at the Commonwealth Arts Festival in 1986. The episode of Chakravuha is taken from the Drona Parva of the Mahabharata. The play banks on the story of Abhimanyu's assassination in the hands of the Saptarathish or seven charioteers from the Kaurav site in the battle of Kurukshetra. Ratanthiyam employs his classical story to address contemporary issue from a Manipuri perspective. According to Shamik Bandhapadhyay, the Abhimanyu story offers him means Ratantiyam, an opportunity to attack the cult of heroism, which is only too often held up to the Manipuri youth by political forces playing for uh, sectarian stakes to drive them to senseless acts of virtual suicide. For him or Thiam, Avimanu trusting so full hardily his technique is one of the younger generations in Manipur. Thiam himself has asserted that the classical sources are uh, reappropriated in the Manipuri context. Through the play Chakravuha, he then interrogates the system, the state machinery, the power structure embedded in the society and finally the position of an individual in the society. Thiam explains, I quote, I am asking myself again and again, where do I stand as an individual? I feel a whole burden of anxiety talk of peace, talk of war or talk of struggle. I feel that an individual is trapped. With all these things as an individual, I have to take a position against the violence going on, against the corruption, against the system. Talking about the system as a theatre worker, I have always felt it my duty to attack this system. I unquote. Thiem's play is then a play of resistance too. Thiam questions Avimanu's sacrifice as a heroic act, Avimanu himself affirms within the play. I set out on this last journey with an unanswered question in my heart, am, am I a scapegoat or am I a martyr? Kurukshetra war is also portrayed in the play, not as a, a sacrosanct divine war edited by gods and goddess or fought by larger than life figures. Rather, Thiam depicts the war as a war of power grabbers. The flags become the symbol of divisive passions leading to violent confrontation war between the nation states. The Kauravs, through the rhetoric of pressure, patriotism and provocation, strategically manipulate Drona to create the Chakravuha the cosmic formation of military warfare. On the other hand, the Pandavas like Vima and Yudhishthira beguile Avimannu to enter the Chakravyuha, even after knowing that Avimannu knows how to enter this dangerous trap, but does not know how to get out of it. The provocation of Yudhishthira, O oh my son Avi, embraces him, you are so daring, so brave, I am pleased. In fact, I am overjoyed, is followed by the description given by the dramatist. The moves, gestures, expression of Bhima and Yudhishthira indicate a pre-planned intention. Ratanthiyam's scheme to situate each of the classical character in contemporary time is clear when he talks about Duryodhana in the play, Duryodhana manipulates Gita's sloka to interpolate Drona. He also blurs the distinction between dharma and adharma in order to force drona to create chakravuha against the pandavas ratanthiyam justifies i was looking at the gita from the standpoint of duryodhana and also from the point of view of contemporary reality we live in a materialistic world and so how can any duryodhana a man who has fulfilled his duties as a king find this absolute truth he has been systematic, calculating and aware of the course of events. For him, true truth stems from his concrete reality. He is logical. Duryodhana believes he is fighting a war because he has to. Nagpal commented. As opposed to this darker world of 
machination and power play Ratantiam in the Arjun Shubhadra episode of Chakrabuha introduces a more sacred and serene private space of Om, a space made of memories and dreams through the flashback technique. The episode recounts the affectionate interaction between Arjuna and Shubhadra, where Arjuna reveals the secret strategy to invade the Chakravuha to Shubhadra. This is the narrative visualized through the fetus of Avimanyu in mother's womb. The innocent world of the Om visualized through an atmosphere swathed in silvery moonbeams is antithetical to the anxieties and apprehension of the imminent war in the near future. Uh, this also advocates the time when the youth of Abhimanyu would be imperiled by the Chakravuha. At the same time, this also allegorizes the invasion of a space by some darker forces. Ratantiam comments on the scene. The Om sin was a problem at the point we thought we could create it uh, with levers. Levers for Abhimanyu in the Om, then I thought of a cave, Abhimanyu entangled in a spider web, unable to breathe. The important point was that Abhimanyu was trapped in a space, he is listening to the cruelty in society as expressed by Arjuna to Shubhadra and wants to get out and fight. In the Mahabharata, he only hears the Chakravuha mantra, but I wanted Abhimanyu to represent society. I wanted the audience to Shubhadra and Arjuna's conversation. And this is a comment made by Ratanthiyam and quoted in Nagpal's book. Performative aspect of the play is more interesting in the context of Chakravuha because it is through the continuous rehearsal that the drama came into shape. Thiam has clarified the lack of chronological order in the play. I quote, because I want to establish the active characters in the Kaurava and Pandava camps first, long before the hero I had conceived his killers, the Saptarathi. I unquote. Uh, now, you can uh, watch a photographic scene from the play right on the screen. Uh, now, uh, let us discuss about Kanhayalal and his play Pebeth. Kanhayalal 1941 to 2016 is a stalwart in the world of Indian theatre. He is quite well known for his experimental technique in his dramatic productions. His intimate engagement with theatre, which he loves to call as theatre of the earth, made possible redefining traditional idea of dramaturgy. Kanhayalal has also his own famous theatre group named Kalakshetra. He produced memorable pieces like Kabui Keoba or Half Man, Half Tiger, Khumdan Merobi, The Last Girl, Pebeth, Impulse 73, Memoirs of Afri Africa. He took theatre closer to life, almost blurring the boundary between life and drama when he inspired a hundred women vendors from the historic Nupi Kethal to perform a non proscenium open air theatrical production of Nupi Lan, Women's Agitation in 1978. Pebet, which was released in 1975, is based on a popular folktale of Manipur. Pebet is a part of the collection of fireside stories or Fangawari which are told to Manipuri children by their grandmothers. Pebeth is a bird smaller than a sparrow, which the Manipuris believed that once existed. The tale is about a Pebeth family, where the mother Pebeth evades the predatory attention of a greedy cat by flattering him. She continues to boost his ego till her children are ready to protect themselves. Once they are grown up, she resists the cat who captures the youngest of her brood. Finally, through her clavery, the mother manages to freak the cat into, into freeing her child. The pebbets are ultimately united as the cat disappears from their lives, somewhat dispirited. In Kanayalal's play, the first and the last parts of the story are left more or less intact. Kanhalal departs from the traditional story in the middle of the play after the youngest offspring has been captured. While frantically searching her lost brood, the worried mother is visited 
by a nightmare where all her broods are trapped by the mischievous cat. They are subjugated and indoctrinated in such a way that they even happily lick the buttock of the cat literally. But one of them protests and peels of parts of the buttock of the cat with his teeth. The aberrant brood is then subjected to brutal torture by his own siblings at the instruction of the cat. The cat becomes successful in setting them against one other who even go to the extent of attacking their own mother ironically chanting the Sanskrit phrase Janani Janma Bhumischa Shargadopi Gariyoshi Mother and the motherland are greater than even paradise. However, the, uh, the proselytized broods finally recover from the state of their forced subservience and successfully come out of the devilish clutch of the cat. Kanhalal politicizes this traditional folktale to comment on cultural colonization that the Methi community in Manipur suffered. This family of Pebets represented in the play symbolically stands for the traditional Methi cult of Manipur. The man playing the role of the cat in the play wears a dhoti and holds a mala of wooden beads in one hand. Thus, in the play, the cat is represented as a pseudo monk that symbolically stands for the Vaishnavite power. Vaishnavism as a movement or a religious practice was propagated in Manipur during the ruling period of King Garib Nibas. 1709 to 1748 and Vagya Chandra 1763 to 1798. The period witnessed widespread destruction of traditional lie or gods, the burning of ancient manuscripts or pua, the banning of the Maithi script and its replacement by the Bengali script, the introduction of the Hindu calendar and system of Gotras, enforcement of a Hindu dietary laws and the uh, sanctification of the first recorded instances in Manipuri history of Sati or Barucha um, called it politics of indigenous theatre and, and the sanctification of the first recorded instances in Manipuri history of Sati, Barucha commentated in politics of indigenous theatre. The indigenous culture of Manipur was then demolished with the entry of Vaishnavism. A similar incident happens in the Pebeth family with the entry of the predatory cat. This disintegration of the Pebeth children that occurs in the play symbolically stands for the disintegration of the seven clans that form the Maithi community with the arrival of Vaishnavite movement from India. But Kanhalal's play is also imbued with poetics of resistance. One Pebeth broods uh, biting of the cat's arrows is symbolic resistance that resemble the emergence of various movements aiming at the revival of Maithism in Manipuri. When the play was produced first time in 1975, it was dismissed as anti-Hindu and anti-Indian play too. Rustam Barucha would argue that to an extent this criticism is the consequence of misreading Kanhalal's attitude toward Janmupumi. At no point does the play attack the idea of patriotism or love for one's motherland. What Kanhalal is questioning are the cultural formations through which concepts of patriotism and loyalty are imposed. In the name of Janmubhumi and not Ima Lepak, which is the Manipuri word for motherland, the cat uses his language and strategy to make the Pebets abuse their own mother. The real fear of mother Pebet is not that her children will be eaten by the cat, but rather that they will be converted to cat culture, politics of indigenous theatre, Barucha commented in politics of indigenous theatre. Kanalal here questions this politics of hegemonic assertion, both linguistic as well as cultural. Rustam Barucha points out that Kanalal's strategy has changed in the play's later productions. He figures out diffusion of identity in Kanhalal's play. Kanhalal felt the need to translate the immediate context of the play. Barucha argues that if Kanhalal's ethnicity seems diffused today, this is certainly a reflection of larger cultural political situation in the state. 
where the resurgence of Maiti identity has lost its edge. The philosophy and political modes of resistance have changed with the emergence of the PLA. In addition, the critical intervention of the Indian army has cast a different perspective on resistance of any kind. Baruch explains that in his later plays like Memoirs of Africa, the problems of oppression and resistance take on an elemental significance. It transcends the historicity and becomes universal vision. Kanayalal's performative strategy is also unique. Barucha explains that his idiom of performance is rooted in the poverty of third theatre. He works without sounds, lights or sound recording of any kind. Costumes are minimal and the stage is flexible. Kanayalal's plays can be performed on the proscenium stage or in an empty hall or field. Now, uh, you can uh, see the photos of uh, Kanayalal's play Pebet uh, right on the screen. Um, now, let us conclude the discussion. Both Ratanthiyam and Kanhalal banks on small narratives to critique the hegemony and to challenge the power structure which traps the individual or the indigenous clan. They subvert foundations or universal criteria of truth and knowledge generated through the medium of grand or meta theory and the supremacy of linear historiography. Chakrabuha moves back backward to the time of Kurukshetra war and Pebet talks about the bard of folk tale which is now extinct. It is through the backward movement of time and these dramatists grapple the present. These plays are then polyvalent sites to ask question about identity politics in contemporary society. Marginality becomes the key troop in their narratives, in their representation of underrepresented uh, characters and uh, through uh, their application of experimental dramaturgy. Now, uh, let us summarize the discussion. Through this, this discussion, we came to know about Manipuri theatre tradition and the alternative theatre movement uh, in India and which is actually uh, run by, carried over by different dramatists, different theatre personalities of different parts of India. Ratanthiyam and Kanayalal, not only the stalwart of Manipuri theatre, but they are also stalwart of Indian theatrical tradition, stalwart of Indian theatre. And through these two texts, we, we, uh, we understood the, 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 the meaning, understood the, the concept and understood the uh, reality of oppression and uh, how uh, this oppression has been symbolized and how the old text from, from the Mahabharata and the text from the uh, ancient folk tales have been recreated, have been reconstructed in the new theatrical forms and in new theatrical narrative uh, and how these texts are contextualized in the political condition and the political context, cultural context of modern or contemporary Manipur. So, in this regard, these two texts are very much significant not only to understand the Indian theatrical tradition or the alternative theatrical tradition and movement which have been happening in India uh, since last few decades, but also to understand the political and cultural context of Manipur. Thank you.